Uh, well, let's get right into it, my friend. And we'll start it off by talking about the Saints OTAs. Of course, a few things happened during the OTAs this past weekend. And very interesting enough dealing with it, uh, who, had, who seemed to headline the show was Mr. Quarterback Taysom Hill, special teamer quarterback Taysom Hill. He was one of the top people. He looked really good out there. Coach Payton mentioned him as well during the OTAs. We also got to see a lot of the guys together in uniform, guys like Cameron Meredith catch the ball and run it. He looks pretty good, D.C., based upon what I've seen from Cameron Meredith. Uh, Looked like he's uh, gotten over that injury, and he could be a guy, obviously, that, you know, we're looking at a guy like him. Obviously, he could be – he's going to be a steal for what the Saints got him for. But Taysom Hills look good. David Onyemata is a guy that we done heaped a lot of praise on. And we really think that – and like I've said before, this is not a secret, that I think he will take Tyler Davidson's position uh, and, and and make the Saints' defensive front for a lot more uh, forceful. Then there's also expectations about Elvin Kamara. There's Patrick Robinson. There's Davenport. There is uh, the linebackers, uh, Klein and Anzalone, coming off an injury. Uh, they're healthy again. I already mentioned Cameron Meredith. And then, of course, some of the depth, like Tyron Walker. Uh, he's on, uh, not Tyron Walker, but uh, Jay Bromley and a few of the other defensive guys, like uh, the guy they got from Oregon, uh, the undrafted guys coming in. DC, talk to me, man, about the OTAs and who you think uh, uh, out of these OTA guys, who do you think will surprise us? moving ahead now when you say surprise us moving ahead is this uh alluding to what we were talking about earlier with our two surprise players that's right or is this just based on OTAs I'm saying uh it, it, you know in the OTAs you know some of the guys I'm sure I get the questions right right well you can you can answer uh either way if you like because they both I'm basically just linking the OTAs with the player <laughs> surprise questions so you right on both I, I fences. I see what you're doing. Yes, sir. I see what very, you're doing. Very astutely. Uh, right. Very astute. <laughs> uh, I think the two guys that should surprise would be uh, Oyamada at some point. Maybe not so much as the OTAs, but that's one of my surprise players um, that I'm looking for moving forward. He was very dominant. I noticed it pretty much since we got him, um, even that first year when we had Nick Farrell, and he would come in. Um, he's always been good, so um, us not drafting a D tackle, maybe that was why. So uh, that's definitely going to be one of my surprise players for OTAs. So far, I got to go with, uh, and it's also going to tie into my other surprise player, which will be Cameron Meredith. Um, he's been surprising a lot of people already because he's way ahead of schedule from his injury. This man tore his ACL and MCL. Now, mind you, it was a year and some change ago, maybe a little longer than that. But according to the timetable that he had, he's way ahead of it. So that is a very positive note to see him out there already catching passes from Drew Brees. And we have a versatile weapon in him, a guy that could uh, do things maybe like a Lance Moore uh, mixed with the height and probably also the ability of a Marcus Colston. Tie it in with the speed of, um, dang, his name's on the tip of my tongue, man, uh, Robert Meacham. So it might be all three of those dudes rolled into one in this one guy if uh, his injury allows him to be what he was. So those two players, uh, I think we're looking at on the offensive side and the defensive side having a dynamic season. And remember the names. And remember that I told you first. There you go. Well, you know what? You know, I, like I said, we, we spoke about some of them guys, and I can agree with, uh, you know, most of the – definitely some of the guys that you made mention of. Cameron Merritt is a really good one. A lot of people is going to be keeping an eye on Cameron Merritt, no doubt about it, man, because a big receiver like that with speed, uh, he brings a different dimension to the Saints wide receivers. You usually have uh, guys – yeah, Wiggle too, right. and yeah. he's smooth. Yeah, he is a smooth guy, very fluid. And uh, it's going to be exciting to see some of these guys got get out here – and try to make a case for themselves. It's just it's going to be exciting. First group of OTAs, of course, 
uh, this week, uh, this past, and then of course coming up this upcoming weekend, another group of OTAs, and it's just good to see uh, that our Saints are back out there, and they got a whole new team of guys, most of new guys on definitely on it's definitely on the defensive side of the ball, looking to improve. Uh, that defense, and we'll cover that later on as well. Let's move into our next topic. We're going to talk about New Orleans hosting the 2024 Super Bowl. That's right. New Orleans was unanimously approved, you know, to host uh, the Super Bowl in 2024. Been a, time, Been a long time. I think it was since 2013, the last time the Saints, I mean, the, the city of New Orleans hosted a I Super Bowl. 2012, huh? I, well, I guess, thank you. 2012 or 2013, one of those two. But it was uh, the, it was a done by secret battle. That of course, down the line, the final heard the process introduced last year to name the Super Bowl sites. And of course, the previous course of action required interested cities to bid for the right to host the event. With the change, the NFL now approaches a prospective bidder to put it together, a proposal to host, host the Super Bowl. Which in which case, Phoenix got it, and then New Orleans did get it the, the, the following year. Phoenix got it in twenty twenty three. The New Orleans got it in twenty and twenty four. Big time thing. Commissioner uh, Roger Goodell was quoted as saying, "We're thrilled to be returning to those cities, to the to the to the, the big cities of uh, Phoenix as well as New Orleans. And of course, New Orleans should have the Super Bowl every year. We just that kind of city. We made, we got all the hotel yeah. space, we got the arenas, we are party town, we got better food, we got better drink, we just overall a better situation. And so with, that. and then another so thing." That. Deny uh, Arizona, even man. Last time they had a Super Bowl, a lot of death or whatever reason. That probably was one of the most entertaining Super Bowls we've seen since then. Um, maybe the what Seattle, New England Super Bowl, right? Other than uh, the, the um, Cardinals and uh, wait, what was that? The Cardinals? Yeah, no, that that couldn't have been the Cardinals because they uh, never mind. We're talking about. Do you remember the Pittsburgh Super Bowl, right? When it went yeah. down to the wires with the Cardinals? Right, I, I don't I, think that was that. I, I got you, my friend. I I remember, but Phoenix is a very nice city. <laughs> But, of course, we're going to be more cordial toward New Orleans being that our, our, that's our hometown. Now, Gil Benson, a lot of credit got to be going to Gil Benson because uh, this lady never stops working. She was quoted as saying, we had so many people work on this project, and this is important to New Orleans. And this is going to be our 11th Super Bowl, which we're so excited about. Tom Benson would have been so happy and just wanted to keep his legacy. I just wanted to keep his legacy alive thank New Orleans Sports Foundation and everyone that worked on this project that is so numerous to recall and name individually. So, of course, once again, Gail Benson is showing her hard work ethic and keeping the legacy of Tom Benson alive and, and, and things that he's been doing. She's been well uh, schooled in the matter and she's as class as it gets. Big up to Gail Benson and the administrators around her as the Saints do uh, the New City of New Orleans capture another Super Bowl in 20. 20- 24. So big ups to Saints organization for making that happen. Now, we're about to go into our first commercial break. When we come back on the other side of the break, we'll finish up on our questions. We'll talk about that crucial New Orleans players, excuse me, the NFL players, coaches, owners, as they react to the policy about the national anthem. And we're going to talk about that thing on the other side of the break. We'll also get DC's bubble guys. We'll talk about the top 10, perhaps defense improvements for the Saints among LSU news as well. You're listening to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Thank you. 